thank you for inviting me. Uh, as a friend, it's a wonderful introduction. Uh, I work for IRS. People usually don't like to <laughs> talk to us. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, for the past few years, a lot of our business units were trying to provide a lot of services to our customers. And typically, they, they do not provide those services right now, or they provide it on the phone or on mail, you know, snail mail. So they want to do that on the web. Uh, and uh, they've been trying to do that for the past four years. And the biggest stumbling block, block for us is authenticating our customers. You know, the customers could be taxpayers, other entities that are not, you know, that pay taxes, may not be individuals, but other agencies and entities, right? Uh, so we were asked uh, to look into solving this, you know, the problem of authenticating our customers. Uh, eight, nine months ago, we were tasked to do that, and actually the person who was leading this is here, Jeff, is leading that, uh, that initiative. Uh, the biggest, uh, you know, thing we were looking at is, uh, for the past eight, nine months is, what is the policy around authenticating external entities, what are the requirements, what technology exists out there, what is the cost of doing it, and what should the ultimate solution look like. So that is what we were trying to do. And we, we have reached, uh, you know, we know where we want to go, where we want to be. Uh, so let me talk about these four areas, the policy, the requirements, the technologies, and the approximate cost of doing this. With respect to policy, OMB provided uh, guidance in 04, it's only 0404, that essentially asks us to do a authentication risk assessment for all transactions that we provide uh, to our external customers on the web. And you know, essentially tells us to look at each transaction, whether it's an existing or a new transaction, and ensure that the authentication process provide a sufficient assurance level. Right? So that's what the memo says, and it actually points out to NIST saying, you know, go to NIST and NIST will provide additional guidance. In 2006, NIST provided 863, it's a special guide which provides uh, authentication guidance. Uh, it provides four different assurance levels, the requirements are shared with those four. Uh, from our agency perspective, what we did look at is for all the four assurance levels, uh, the two important things, two areas. One is the identity perfect and then the actual issuance of credentials and what it takes to do it and what technologies are out there, right? So the identity proofing, there are two, you know, you can do in person or remote. Our customers have so much, I mean, 203 million users, we cannot in person identity proof each one of them. So that is one requirement that we have to look into. Uh, so what we have done is we have in now a, a, a framework where we actually do any authentication risk assessment on all the transactions. So we are consistent. I mean, if somebody says we're going to provide this transaction, and if somebody says that's level two, somebody else saying, oh, the same transaction that's level three doesn't make sense. So we want to be consistent. We do have a framework. So we, we have been doing that, and what we have realized is most of our transactions fall under level two, and some fall under level three. So our emphasis was on looking at level two and level three and see, can we actually meet those? Can we do it now? Uh, so, as I said, uh, 863 is out there. As a, a new uh, draft is released and they're updating as we speak, 863. And for us, the biggest issue is with identity proofing. For level two, we can, we believe we can actually meet the requirements right now. We do not have to buy any commercial services for identity proofing. We can do it ourselves with what we have. And, you know, and as well as uh, you know, with issuing credentials. For uh, level two, we can use username passwords. We could meet most of our transactions that way. Not difficult, we can do it now. When it comes to level three, it gets really tricky because the identity proof and requirements are very difficult to meet, especially the requirement of you need to collect a federal issued ID information as well as a banking financial account information. Either that could be a bank account or a credit card number. And then we have to verify electronically both of them. You know, IDs we can deal with it, but verifying whether this bank account belongs to you is not easy. We cannot do it ourselves. We have to go outside to do it. And that would add cost to it. Typically, the cost would run anywhere from 25 cents to $1 if we can do it. 
I'm not saying we can do it easily. If we can do it, at least it would add 25 cents to a dollar per transaction. So we are work working with NIST to see whether the requirements can be, you know, we can use some other information instead of just financial account. You know, whether it's bank account or some other, such as AGI, you know, which is what we have, can we use that? So we are looking into that because that is one area. The second area is the technology. You know, four years, five years ago, what can we use? We use software certificates, security tokens. They're a little more expensive. Software certificates, they're not easy to use. I mean, my mom, there's no way she'll be using that, okay? So, but now, the technology has changed. For level three, there are uh, OTP tokens. You can have tokens on your cell phones. Uh, not difficult to use. You can get your second factor on your cell phone. You can get, people can send SMS message with a passphrase on your cell phone that you could use. So there are more options available now that are a lot reasonably priced that you could do for level three. So uh, where we are is we believe 80 to 90% of the transactions that fall under level two, we can do it now. For level three transactions, once we resolve the ID proofing issues, we should be able to meet them year, two years down the road. Great, thank you. It's good that, that that struggle between the usability and the security is something that really becomes very important when you're broadening it out to the citizens. So, so Paul, we want to pick it up from there and sort of uh, tell us a little